Yeshua was going to be a teacher of Israel, the ultimate teacher of Israel. But he was also going to be a teacher of the Gentiles, of the nations. And so it should be no surprise that we see Yeshua engaging the centurion or healing the Syrophoenician woman or in the book of Acts, the gospel going to the nations, to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. This is exactly what the Torah and the prophets spoke about, even though many of the Jewish religious leaders of the day couldn't wrap their mind around it. I want to look at something with you here for a moment which is, it clearly says in the Gospels that Yeshua began his ministry at the age of 30. And we're going to look more, more at that verse in a moment. But, okay, what I want to ask the question is, why does Yeshua begin his ministry at age 30? As we said, if there's a detail in the Bible, it is there for a reason. You know, I like the numbers. <laughs> so we're going to look at the number 30. Okay, so the first thing we have to understand is that 30 represents the beginning of a person's mission or formal ministry. 30 represents in the Bible the beginning of a person's mission or their formal ministry ministry okay where do we see this okay the first place in the life of joseph this is what it says genesis 41 46 now joseph was 30 years old when he began serving as representative of pharaoh king of egypt okay so you joseph began his ministry his service, his mission at the age of 30. And this is significant. Why? Because as we've talked about many times, Yeshua is the greater than Joseph. He literally is the son of Joseph. His Hebrew name would have been Yeshua ben Yosef. Yeshua, the son of Joseph. Okay. And we know that Joseph is a picture of the Messiah, right? Joseph is rejected by his brothers. He's sold for silver. He's stripped of his tunic. He's thrown into the pit like Yeshua was put into uh, the prison, or you could say he was put into the grave, right? He was exalted from prison to the palace. He served as at the right hand of Pharaoh, as second in command, even as Yeshua is seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven, right? The brothers didn't recognize him the first time they came down to Egypt. They only recognized him the second time they came down. It's the same way the Jewish people primarily didn't recognize Yeshua at his first coming. But they will recognize him at the second coming. Joseph is a picture of the Messiah's role as being rejected and suffering. And one of the names of the Messiah in Jewish thought is Messiah, son of Joseph. So literally, just like Joseph began his ministry, his mission at 30, and just like Joseph is a picture of Messiah, Yeshua, the literal son of Joseph, begins his ministry, his divine mission at age 30. But 30 is also connected to kingship. David, 2 Samuel 5, 4 tells us, began his rule as king. At what age? <laughs> you can guess. At age 30. So 30 is connected to David's rule as king. And the rabbis tell us that kingship is acquired through 30 attributes. A king should possess 30 attributes to truly be a great king, the type of king that the Lord desires. But where do they get this idea of 30 attributes? Well, Judah in Hebrew is Yehuda. Can you say Yehuda? Yehuda is the Hebrew for Judah. And as you all know, in Hebrew, 
it's alphanumeric. That means every letter has a number and you write numbers with letters in Hebrew. So if you add up all of the letters in Judah's name in Hebrew, it adds up to what? The number 30 in Gematria. Okay, so the numeric value of Judah is 30. Okay, and what tribe was Messiah from? Messiah is from the tribe of Judah, and the king is ultimately to come from the tribe of Judah. This is Genesis 49, 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, literally Shiloh can be translated, the one to whom it belongs comes, King Messiah, and to him will be the obedience of the nations. And so, so significant, right? Judah embodies the 30 attributes and essence of kingship. Think about it for a moment. The brothers, Joseph tests his brothers, right? When they come down to Egypt to buy grain to see if they really changed. And basically he tests them by hiding his cup in you know, Judah and, and Benjamin's bag, right? And what happens in the story, Judah is the one who steps up to save Benjamin's life. He says, listen, I'm not going to let you keep my brother. Take me in his stead. Judah had finally learned his lesson. He finally stepped into his role as the leader, as the one from whom kingship was going to come, when he was willing to substitute his life and sacrifice his life for Benjamin. And this is ultimately the picture of the Messiah. No greater love than this than a man lays down his life for his friends. This is what Judah did for Benjamin. This is what ultimately Messiah does for us. So Messiah, as the ultimate son of David, like David, begins his ministry at 30, begins uh, to rule, begins his ministry at 30 years of age, demonstrating that he is the prophesied descendant of Judah, which has a numerical value of 30, who embodies the 30 attributes of kingship. So Yeshua inaugurates his rule and reign and proclaims the kingdom of God is at hand at age 30, just like David, right? So it's no coincidence that 30 is connected to both Judah and Joseph, which are the two key aspects of the Messiah called son of Joseph, son of David, both connected to the number 30. But of course, there is still so much more uh, to be understood in connection to the number 30. The number 30 is also connected to teaching. So as we said, in Hebrew letters, um, in Hebrew, numbers are written with letters. So the letter that represents 30, the letter that has the numeric value of 30, is the letter Lamed. Can you say Lamed? Lamed. The letter Lamed, which has a numerical value of 30, literally means, one of the things it literally means, means several things, but one of the things it literally means is to teach. So Messiah began to teach and preach at the age of 30, 30 being the letter Lamed, okay? So literally, the number that represents teaching and preaching is the year that Yeshua is anointed as king by the Holy Spirit. We're going to look at that at his immersion, at his baptism, and begins to teach and preach the kingdom. But even, the, even his role as teacher, which as we said is connected to number 30, is connected to his role as king. Because the Torah tells us in Deuteronomy, and we're going to get more into this in Signs and Secrets of the Messiah, um, the king was to write two Torah scrolls. 
by hand himself because he was to, you know, as, you know, Proverbs says, kings rule by me, meaning wisdom, meaning the wisdom of the word, which is first and foremost embodied in the Torah. So kingship is connected to learning and teaching. What did Solomon ask for? The, the greatest son of David, he asked for wisdom. He asked for understanding. So ideally, the king of Israel is specifically a teacher and a lifelong learner who was meant to also be a, a judge who could adjudicate. The king was to be the ultimate judge and arbiter adjudicator of all matters of Torah. And we see this again in the life of Solomon when there was dispute between the two women over whose baby it was. No one could figure out how to get to the bottom of this case. So they brought it to Solomon. And you know, the story said, listen, cut the baby in half. Each one of you can have half. And he was testing to see who the true mother, the mother who was willing to give the baby away instead of cutting it in half. That was the true mother, but that took wisdom. Wisdom comes from the word. It is, a, Proverbs 3 tells us, it is a tree of life to those who grab hold of it, right? It is the wisdom of God, okay? And we see this prophetically concerning the Messiah in Isaiah chapter 11. It says this, then a shoot will come forth from the stem of Jesse, and a branch will come forth from its roots. And the spirit, the Ruach of Adonai, the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and insight, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of under, uh, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. He will delight in the fear of Adonai. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness will judge the poor and decide with fairness for the poor of the land. He will strike the land with the rod of his mouth and the breath of his lips will slay the wicked. Wow. So we see Messiah is to be a judge. He is, and we see this ultimately, every person is going to have to stand before Messiah like the two women stood before the throne of Solomon. Each one of us is going to have to stand before Messiah and to give an account for our lives. Incredible, right? So, Messiah was to be a judge, but he was going to judge with wisdom and insight. This is the Messiah, right? He is the ultimate knowledge of the revealed Torah as well as the concealed wisdom of the Torah. But then going on in verse chapter 10, it says this, and I just want to also note that he judges for the poor. Right, But with righteousness, he would judge for the poor and decide with fairness for the poor of the land. So much of Messiah's ministry was focused on proclaiming liberty and justice to the poor. He cared about the poor. He cared about, he cared about those who were disenfranchised. He cared about those who had the least amount of value and worth. He cared about those who were the most mistreated. You know, when Yeshua heals the leper or heals the woman with the flow or the tax collector or the, the Gentile centurion, these were the poor and or the despised of the people, right? Those who no one wanted to associate, those who struggled because of their illness or struggled because of their, their social status, okay? But Yeshua caring for them and proclaiming the good news for them and, and healing for them and feeding them and teaching them. This was him fulfilling Isaiah chapter 11, that messianic prophecy. But it goes on to say in verse 10 of Isaiah 11, and it will also come about in that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples, for the nations, for the goyim. The nations will seek him, and his resting place will be glorious. What does this tell us? 
Yeshua was going to be a teacher of Israel, the ultimate teacher of Israel. But he was also going to be a teacher of the Gentiles, of the nations. And so it should be no surprise that we see Yeshua engaging the centurion or healing the Syrophoenician woman or in the book of Acts, the gospel going to the nations, to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. This is exactly what the Torah and the prophets spoke about, even though many of the Jewish religious leaders of the day couldn't wrap their mind around it. And concerning this, Rabbi Tanhuma says, King Messiah will come for no other reason, no other purpose than to teach the nations of the earth the 30 precepts. So again, Messiah's role as king is 30, is connected to teacher, which is connected to 30, which is connected to teaching the nations of 30 precepts. And the year begins his ministry is the number 30. 